I'm not going to talk in too much detail, but I'm just going to show you a bit of how the infrastructure is designed. So the Yonder contents are very proliferated. So how will all the various contents be proliferated? Human beings within three years increase their desires. So in three years, there's twice the, the greed, we might say in English, but desire is more the term in Japanese. And it is predicted that in 10 years there are going to be so many categories that will be so much content that you won't be able to do research through it in the, on the internet. So in order to make that search uh, possible, we are going to study that topic. And so as we predict things as we go along, we are going to watch the progression of technology. So and so this is what I came to think about science, technology, and the, in the arts by the year 2013. And this is my model, the, 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 the thinker. This is at the Shizuoka, Univers uh, the Shizuoka uh, Art Museum. It's a replica. Also, I thought very hard about arts and peace, and also arts and war. I am here showing you two Pablos, Pablo Casals and Pablo Picasso. Pablo Casal is a cello specialist, and uh, just recently, uh, what was it, 1973, he passed away? And his concerts were very much appreciated by the world. And Geronica, Picasso, a, a picture in Madrid, a Picasso painting in Madrid. There is a reproduction of this in Japan. At the Sofia Museum, you can see the reproduction. So when was this kind of art born? It was born while wars were going on. So we have the impression that great works of art are produced during wartime. And wars also give science and technology the opportunity to progress. And we have experienced that science, technology, and the arts also contribute to wars. So to think about art and peace, means that we must also connect that with art and war. So we have to think very hard about producing the study of art and peace. 
that's a Democrat. I would like you all to think about this problem as well. So, I would like you to think about this problem as well. So, I would like you to think about this problem as well. So, I would like you to think about this problem as well. So, I would like you to think about this problem as well. So, I would like you to think about this problem as well. So he has also had discussions with the sister of the king of Bhutan about the issue of what is human happiness. Bhutan is famous throughout the world because it is said to have the largest number of happy people. <laughs> So this is Miyako Odori in Kyoto. Very many different roads to enjoyment. And at this particular time, he is always serving udon, Japanese noodles, to the Maiko san, to the studying geisha. So he has pure time of enjoyment. それから芸術家と芸術作品の関係というのも一生懸命見て考えるということをやります。So I have thought very much about looking at the works of art and thinking about the works of art. 矢野部健次という人ですけれども、この人の作品は今あの私の学長室でも一つ買ってます。Oh, and he has some of the artworks of 矢野部健次 in his office. それからキャッツのゴミを作りました学生たちと劇団式のミュージカル猫の,猫の,ゴミのが舞台のゴミですからゴミの大きさが大きいですね。So the cat stage garbage that was produced was quite large. まあ、こういうことをいろんなことをやって芸術の世界で面白いでしょう。So doing all of these various things in the world of the arts is very interesting, isn't it? で、それで学生たちには言ったのは、自然をよく理解して、そしてそれを超える作品を作るということです。So for all of you students, I would like you to think very hard about understanding nature very well, and through that, creating beyond nature. で典型的に面白い自然の姿を写真でいくつかお見せします。これ全部自然の花ですね。These are various natural flowers that I'm showing you. こういう花がいっぱいあります。There are many, many flowers like this. これも自然ですね。These are all natural. そしてね、ゴキブリでも非常に可愛いゴキブリもいます。Even cockroaches among them are the very cute. それから、大体動物の世界では、オスがメスに一生懸命サービスするというのが普通ですね。In the natural world, it is usual that the male is always giving presents to the female. こういうその群れで暮らすということも自然の特徴です。群れ ?Oh, living in groups, you can see that this is a very specific characteristic. こういういろんな自然の例を一生懸命見ることによって、芸術作品は一体どうあるべきかということを考える。So in looking through these phenomena, I would like you to think very much about what is art. そして生き物の知恵があります。これは擬態と言います。And so there is wisdom in nature, and this is what is called mimicry. 実によく分けるんですね。And わかりますよね。Creatures, 生き物がいる。Creatures in nature often mimic. Other things in nature. This will be a great reference. And then you can compare the human works of art and what's actually out there in nature. And it's not so easy to create a work of art that goes beyond nature. 芸術は自然の模倣であると言ってるんですけど、それは嘘で、そんなそんなのは芸術じゃないよね。やっぱり自然を超える作品を作らなきゃいけない。The ancient Greek philosophers said that human art mimics nature, but actually that's not true. 
human beings must go beyond nature. So, the Jesus no Monday, the So another important example I would like to give to you is that you must go out and look at technology very closely with your own eyes and make a judgment as to the quality, whether it's good or whether it's bad. These buildings are quite uh, fabulous and lots of money has been poured into them. But if you make them with just a little bit of poor quality, then the building becomes something like this. So what is the difference? Please compare it. Look at the buildings that are reflected in the glass of the buildings that are well produced versus the reflection of the buildings uh, from those that are poorly produced. So somewhere in the construction of these buildings, there is something that went wrong. So in the world there are many, many examples like this where you can observe and make a judgment for yourself. This is very important. Technology gives birth to many, many things, but one of the biggest problems is plastic in the ocean. I mentioned that technology produces many, many things, but this garbage is also one of the children that is produced by technology. Lots of garbage such as this is produced. So, あの、もう一つ例を挙げましょう。これ、青海亀ですけども、海亀がたまたまそのオフィス旅館の人に捕まえて、そしてエサを食べないので、ずっと一生懸命、え、世話をしていただいて、排出物を出しました。半年の間に
でこういう調査に行くんですけれどもあの写真とか何か記録を書いたりして持って,てか出てくることができないんですね全部捨ててこないといけない放射線されますから。All the pictures and the evidence that is taken there, they have to throw away because it's contaminated by radiation. So, in the case of something like this, he reads and creates lots of haiku, and in this way, he keeps it in his mind and comes back from that event. This is all part of the arts. And here is and this is what is what I have taken from my memory, written in haiku. And this is the general translation in English. He has had acute myocardial infraction at one point in his life, and on that experience, he has written a book. This was about 20 years ago. And in this case, in the operating room, etc., you cannot bring your personal computers, so within your mind, you can create haiku. And the very top is the image of his heart. Forty percent of his heart is dead, doesn't move. Okay, it's amazing that such a photograph is recorded from this experience, isn't it? And so when you remember things through haiku, this is the way you can make a recording of that kind of experience. And so as I began to recover, little by little, I began to record this into my personal computer. And taking the instant is a very interesting photography series. So I'd like you to enjoy this. Ah, do you understand what is happening in these images, in the instant? This is very interesting, isn't it? <laughs> you understand what's happening in the far right? They're standing on water, aren't they? And these kinds of photographs are displayed throughout the world, so arts are very interesting, aren't they? Collaboration is very important, I said earlier, but this is the kind of relationship that we have between art, science, and technology. So if you think about this kind of interaction, I would like you to keep all of these uh, ties in mind when you go through your studies, science, technology. で、あと、私はあの、科学者として芸術をやる人たちにどういう講義をしたか、その内容を少しだけお話ししますこれ自然を理解してもらうというために講義をしていました。自然と芸術というタイトルの講義。Okay, and as far as nature and art goes, as I'm an earth scientist, this is the study and the the talk that I have for you about my relationship Arts and 
when you talk about the science of the universe, it's very difficult for artists to understand if we talk in a scientific way. Therefore, I have reproduced this in the form of cartoons. So this is the Earth and the Moon, Luna and Chiu. Terra. Terra. Oh, Terra. Okay. Terra is the Earth and Luna is the Moon, and they go on a trip through the universe. So thinking in seconds, we think, we think about the travel through the universe. There's a big bang that happened. And atoms are born. And there are microwaves that are produced. And so I have reproduced the history of the Earth in the form of cartoons. And so the solar system was born. And so there are super uh, galaxies that have occurred and then the solar system was born. So the very important thing to think about is that in the beginning there were not so many heavy elements as heavy as iron. And then as you go through greater explosions in the universe, you get the production of heavier elements. So we know that the sun and our solar system was not produced at the very beginning, it was produced somewhere in after the production of the, or the birth of the universe. So the solar system was born, and around that, many planets begin to evolve. And so close to the sun, we have planets that have more solid bodies, and further away from the sun, we have more gaseous bodies. And within that, we have the birth of the Earth. And after the Earth was born, there was a large celestial body that collided with the Earth, and from that, the Moon was born. So the Earth and the Moon are about the same age. And through cartoons, I have produced this kind of a book. And right now, this book is being translated into Chinese. It's now in the process of being translated. So it's very difficult to change science into the form of cartoons to help young people to be able to understand. I ask everyone this question, it's very difficult to answer. Why is the night sky so dark? Everybody doesn't understand. For example, when you're in a jungle and there are many, many trees, 
You can't see to the far end of the jungle. There's so many trees. So in space, there are so many stars, which means that the light of those stars should make the night sky the color of silver, shouldn't it? But really, it's quite dark, isn't it? So, so why is it so dark? And if you can find out the answer to that, you will get a Nobel Prize. <laughs> there are many explanations for this. For example, the universe is gradually expanded, and due to that, it's very dark. But with calculations, we don't show that that seems to be the case. There are many, many uh, explanations for this, but please look and do research on your own. Why is it dark? So dark. So what is the role of the sun? The sun has a specific uh, activity. For us, the most important thing is that there's only one sun. In the universe, there are many examples where there are two or three suns together in the same system. But for us, we have just one. So to be revolving about one sun means that we are very stable. Ah, okay, so the sun also has uh, more than Goju Oku, 50 bi 5, 5 billion years worth of energy. So at the passing of only 2 billion years, uh, only half of the energy is used. So we have a long path to go, not much energy. So many people may run out of energy and pass away, but we, our system, our solar system doesn't have to worry about that. This is the most important thing I would like you to remember. And the only people who are worried about energy are the people who are involved with energy who are trying to sell you something. And so, speaking about the sun, I have gone to an observatory where we may observe the sun. And these are the spectrum for the sun. You all know about the RGB, the red, green, blue. These are all that there really is. But we can see all kinds of colors thanks to this. This is very important because of the workings of our brain we are able to distinguish these colors. And within the sun, there is not the colors that we see thanks to the way that we break this down in our minds. So the important thing for us to keep in mind is that for millions of years, we have evolved looking at 
the surface of things that reflect the light of the sun. So our brains work thanks to the fact that we see things reflected from the light of the sun. And so when human beings were born, uh, in the beginning, we were not looking at personal computer screens as we do.